If your pedals spin too freely, it's probably time for some fresh grease. As the grease thins out, the seals are less effective, letting in more dirt and dust. You want to keep grit from the bearing surfaces, so a bit of preventative maintenance is in order. This video will cover the right pedal of an XTR9100. Shimano pedals are all very similar, but keep in mind the threads will be opposite on left and right. Each pedal body has a marking for which way to tighten them. Pay attention so you don't accidentally over tighten what you are trying to loosen. I was able to open this one by hand, but you may need a vise or clamp of some sort to hold the pedal body in order to break yours open. If you don't want to mess with the bearing preload later, you can leave the axle intact and flush it out as much as possible. You'll need to let it dry thoroughly before re-greasing. Just know that you'll likely be leaving some dirt in there and that you won't be packing the grease in as well. Since we're working on the right pedal, the axle is reverse threaded, so the lock nut goes clockwise to loosen. Years of muscle memory can make this difficult to overcome. Notice the notches in the middle of the lock nut. Shimano is kind enough to put these on so you can tell visually that it's a reverse threaded nut. But I'd recommend you not tempt fate by tearing both pedals apart at once. That way if you have any questions, you can always refer to the other. Or you can do like me and make a video. That way you can always go back and see exactly what you did. With the lock nut off, be careful to not raise the silver bushing. This way you won't dump the inner bearings too early. The 9100 pedals, and maybe the 9000s, I'm not sure, use a thinner axle allowing a reduced stack height compared to other Shimano pedals. Due to this, the XTRs use 11 bearings on both the inner and outer compared to 12 bearings in most other models. Having wasted time hunting for misplaced bearings before, I tend to count them frequently to make sure none are missing. All the business happens around this silver bushing-like piece. The bearings run at each end. The black plastic spacer and the collar both float a bit when not in the pedal body. This little black plastic piece is not threaded, but a little twisting back and forth helps remove it. It lives inside the silver bushing. Note that the tapered end is toward the thin end of the axle. If the seal isn't still on the axle, you'll need to pull it from inside the collar. You'll also find this little metal split ring on an XTR axle. This piece is not shown on the Shimano manual and isn't used on the other models, which have a built-in nylon bushing. Worth noting that the manual also shows 12 bearings, which is not correct. Alright, so here you are with everything apart. Clean the parts up with whatever degreaser you prefer. Be careful not to lose any bearings. Trying to get all the old grease off along with any dirt and not introduce any new contaminants. I like to give the parts a quick bath in rubbing alcohol or denatured alcohol to remove any residue from the degreaser. That way the parts are ready to take the fresh grease. With the parts all clean, we're ready to put it back together. This starts off easy enough, but gets more difficult as the parts and your hands get more of the grease on them. Most pedal manufacturers recommend a thick marine grade grease, which helps fight water ingress. I don't ride in the rain much anymore, so I'm using the Shimano Alien Snot Grease on this set. The bright green color will make it easy to see how far inside any dirt got the next time I open these up. Trying to get grease on all the surfaces and fill the voids as much as possible. This isn't super critical since we're going to load a bunch in the pedal body before inserting, but every bit helps. The inner set of bearings, set closer to the frame when installed, are a little tricky to set. There's a shelf on the axle, and ultimately you'll be creating tension between that and the metal bush race thing. But until you put that piece on, you're just kind of guessing where they go and using the grease to hold them in place. One end of the silver bush race is chamfered a bit, so you can tell which end goes up. If you get the inner bearings set right, then the outer ones are a bit easier. 
That little black plastic slide-on piece helps make sure you don't drop one down the axle and mix up the sets. Extra grease helps hold them in place while you're getting it all set. Bit too much grease can also help hold the bearings in place if the whole thing slips out of your hand. As you thread the cone on, remember the reverse threads on the right pedal. Make sure that the bearings are all captive, both inner and outer, then thread the lock nut on. At this point, the whole thing is a slippery mess, so I put the axle on a hex key to help hold it. The next step is all done by feel, so hard to teach on a video. The goal is to tighten the cone tight enough that there's no play or slop, but loose enough that it spins freely. I like to slightly over tighten to where I can feel a small amount of notchiness and then back off. You can see how little I'm backing off the cone each time. The official manual suggests setting them up a bit loose, so if you have to be wrong, be wrong on the loose side, not the tight side. With that set, hold the cone with one wrench and tighten the lock nut down with the other. Don't forget the reverse threads. Once it's set, check for play or tightness again. It's not unusual to go through this adjustment three or more times before getting it dialed in right. Once you're there, make sure the lock nut is good and snug, and check the play again. Now, before you insert your clean axle into the pedal body, make sure you've thoroughly cleaned out the inside. Q-tip swabs are good for getting down in there and getting the inside good and clean. A little rubbing alcohol can help remove residue. Very precisely, measure the exact right amount of grease and put it into the body. This will fill up any remaining voids and squish out the end as we tighten the body on. You want to see completely clean grease squish out as you do this. Pedal body says 10 newton meters. Using this long wrench, I'm going to tighten as tight as I can while holding the body. It's probably short of 10 newton meters, but matches what it started at. Now check the whole thing again for any play in the bearings or any notchiness. If it's not right, pop it back open and try again. Done! With all that fresh grease, you can see that it spins smoothly, but not nearly as freely as when we started. With that done, if your pedals have an embarrassing squeak, 
Check out this video for a quick hack to solve that.